That was the incentive. We bought into the get me free shipping by purchasing Amazon Prime. And then we became loyal clients to Amazon for the next decade, right? We're all shopping now on Amazon before we shop anywhere else. Hello there and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. I hope you're doing wonderfully well. It's great to have you here. If this is your first time with us on the show, I'd like to say welcome and thank you very much for joining us. And for anybody who's been listening to the My Future Business Show for any length of time, it's wonderful knowing that the, different, uh, that the show is making uh, a difference for your business. And on today's show, I have the pleasure of welcoming Sailor at Heart, business owner and marketing expert, Mr. Marco Torres. Welcome to the show, Marco. Thank you. Thank you for having me and congratulations on, we were saying right before we went live, a thousand episodes so far. I'm impressed. I'm glad to be here and very honored. Yes, thank you again for joining me. And you and I are going to be talking about incentive-based marketing and how to stand out in a crowded marketplace and how to add value instead of discounting. But it is customary for us, uh, Marco, to spend a little bit of time learning a little bit about you. I think that is what makes the My Future Business show different because we know that the mechanics of business don't generally change, but certainly the guests and their background do. So where are you calling in from? I'm actually calling in from Mexico City right now. I've been traveling here in Mexico for the last month, and I'll probably be here doing a little bit of the laptop lifestyle for another 30 days or so before I head back to my home in in Florida. I live in southwest Florida. Fort Lauderdale? No, over on the west coast, uh, uh, north of Fort Myers, south of Tampa, a little area called Punta Gorda. Oh, beautiful. And, uh, you know, do you enjoy being at home or do you actually enjoy being uh, in the travel mode? Both, actually. I mean, at home, I've got my uh, my boats in the backyard. Uh, got a big dock, so a lot of space there for several boats to play with. And so I love my home, but I love traveling as well. And my business is wrapped around travel incentives. So I, I get to enjoy the benefit of travel and find ways to uh, write it off. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, look, what we do is we talk about uh, everything to do with, uh, you know, life and business. So tell me, I know that you, uh, Mr. Captain Sailor, I know you love sailing. When's the last time you went out? Yeah, just a couple of months ago, I went out and I'm in the process of getting a new, uh, uh, another sailboat being shipped over to me now. So we'll have a nice 36 foot uh catalina being delivered here soon so that'll be fun for day sailing and what have you very good and then i've got a i've got a 50 foot uh ocean alexander trawler that i enjoy just taking out for longer trips and what have you as well i used to like you know a cat catamaran sailing and spending more time on a sailboat but i've recently got into enjoying uh the trawler with all the big space and comfort for for the wife and what have you. So. Yeah, now I notice also in some of the images that I've stumbled across that you enjoy to, dro- you like dropping a line in. Have you have you done any fishing lately? I've done some fishing recently, but uh, went blank. I was up in uh, Pensacola, Florida. We spent a couple of days on the water and the weather was rough and blowing from the wrong direction and no, <laughs> just nothing on the line, but we had a good time anyway. It's Lots funny. Of you, beer. You rem- <laughs> ah, beautiful. You reminded me of when I went to Mauritius and they said, oh, we're going to go out and catch some uh, large, large fish and we caught nothing. And they said, oh, we felt so bad that they took us out a second day. Again, nothing. Do you have those days and how frustrating are they for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we went to, well, we went to this uh, beautiful uh, uh, fresh fish seafood shop and bought a whole bunch of seafood and came home with that for so we could at least <laughs> hey look what i caught from the fish and chip shop <laughs> exactly <laughs> i love it now when you do get some downtime with your family what do you like to do do you enjoy a movie or do you what do you do i do enjoy going to the movies uh, i do enjoy spending time with uh my you know my kids both live in up in orlando area so drive up there and see my new grandkid and Beautiful. my daughter's got a grandbaby on the way so we do get some time to uh spend time with the family and and if we're not doing that we're we are traveling or going to the movies or yes. I love love dining out i mean i just love find nice restaurants and enjoy some time and uh, smoke a good cigar and have some uh some good, fun uh, yeah yeah now tell me Marco, what do you think you've taught your kids 
now that they've grown up, what do you think is the one thing they've taken away from you as their dad? Well, what the, one of the things they've learned from me is work ethics. They know that success means you're going to need to have serious drive and serious, uh, you know, you're going to need to burn the candle at both ends while you're originally building your business so that you can get to the point where you can then delegate things out and uh, lay back a little bit and start enjoying the, the profits of your of your uh, endeavors fruits of but, the labor yeah it, so they know they know that's what it takes and they're doing the same and proud of them both thank you very much for sharing this is what i love about the show we get to talk about these things a little bit left to center but they make a lot of difference now tell me um you seem to be a person with a great deal of discipline how important is it for startup entrepreneurs? Because there are going to be people who have not walked the road that you've walked thus far, and they may decide, oh, I'm going to give up. It's too hard. What do you say to those type of people? Don't even start if you don't have the, if you're not willing to put in the discipline and the commitment. It, um, you know, I've, I've had to re reinvent myself multiple times mm -hmm. throughout my career. Um, I dropped out of uh, college uh, after only going through a year and a half, so I couldn't fall back on being a professional attorney or doctor or what have you. And I got into sales early on and made a lot of money in commissions and then moved to uh, entrepreneurial uh, efforts. And uh, I tell you what, you know, at the beginning, it required me to be world building my business at night, having my day job and being willing to do both, having the right spouse, having somebody who's going to support you during that process, yep. hopefully be hopefully be working alongside and understanding that uh, while you're, you know, uh, I, I've seen couples that, you know, the spouse is complaining, oh, you're never available, you're not with, uh, you're not hanging out with me, you're not doing anything, you just work, work, work. Well, you, you know, if you're going to do this kind of thing, you do need to, have a have a good deep talk about it and yep. and and then have both everybody willing to understand that i'm gonna you know you're gonna need to make this commitment in order to get things off the ground before it gets normalized yeah tell me before we jump into the core of the core i'd love to learn where it was that you grew up where did you grow up i grew up in puerto rico in, uh, and the u.s virgin islands um i was born in texas some mexican descendants uh, but then I grew up in Puerto Rico and had the, the wonderful opportunity to grow up uh, watching my dad, who was uh, transferred from Texas to Puerto Rico to run General Electric Credit. He was uh, one of the first in my entire family to uh, grad, you know, my background, my family to graduate from college. He graduated from college anyway, and, and he took, got a big career as vice president with General Electric Credit. And. I grew up watching his work ethics, his ability to uh, be successful in the world of business. And then we opened uh, restaurants with my older brother and my mother and dad. We opened five restaurants in five years. Wow. So I had, a, I had an early uh, introduction to entrepreneurship with my family and older brother and, and my mom. Well, that's a great foundation. Now, I, I know that uh, we all have a bucket list. Do you have a bucket list? What's on it still? My bucket list is still to do uh, a lot more traveling and a hell of a lot more sailing. So I do intend to get out and uh, do some longer trips. I've always done coastal sailing all up and down, you know, throughout the Caribbean or uh, out uh, along the coast of Florida. But I've never done really any deep sea. True tea, yeah, exactly. True deep water blue sailing like across the uh, Pacific or Atlantic oh, or anything, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, so it's, you never know. It's, that's, kind of, that's kind of in my bucket list to take some seriously long sailing trips. Now, I know, I know that you've been uh, to a lot of destinations, obviously, uh, given your uh, background, but tell us a little bit about your favorite destima destination thus far. You know, one of my favorite destinations thus far has been to the Philippines. Um, I spent eight months in the philippines uh, a few years ago and and from there i was able to bounce to you know uh, singapore thailand and japan uh, multiple countries throughout asia but but what i really loved about the philippines is one is like nine thousand islands and so there's never uh, there's all you, you never can see it all and and but what i the people were amazing they're just very very um 
well first of all almost everybody speaks english or mm -hmm. everywhere you can find you can find people that speak very good english yep and uh, and that makes it easy as a tourist or as a traveler to be in a foreign country and yet be able to communicate easily with everybody uh i'm bilingual i speak spanish i speak a little bit of portuguese but you know even traveling throughout south america central america etc in spanish is great but it was cool to be all the way over in asia and yeah. and, and experience the uh, culture that completely different different culture even though they're very americanized which also made it easy um but i had really enjoyed the philippines and the filipino people and yeah i'm was, finding i'm finding this uh, call very interesting i'd love to know given um how much you've seen and, and the people that you've been exposed to what's your favorite uh, food my favorite food is well other than mexican i mean you can't, <laughs> i can't i can't i can't get enough of some tacos and uh, <laughs> yeah, me too <laughs> give, give me some good mexican food but outside of that um we uh, you know I would say that some of my favorite food has to be Italian food. There's, I can never get enough, you know, different pasta dishes and Italian food. And then, of course, there's um, on a little bit more exotic side, I guess it would be, um, uh, and I'm coming to mind here, would be Greek. Yep. Um, and uh, But I, I keep rolling around to... Finding Mexican. ways to get my hands on some more Mexican. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing, Mark. I appreciate it. Now, yeah. tell me a little bit about, uh, you've touched on culture. Given how many people that you would have met along your journey, what is one common cultural trait that we all have as human beings? Common cultural trait. What's one thing that we, we do similarly? Do we have a, a, something that we all want, do you think? Well, I think we all love music. Mm -hmm. And the music, music has a deep influence in all of us in one thing or another. Where, as you travel in culture, you'll see uh, that we, you know, people dance all over the world mm -hmm. and from, to their own tunes, their own music, their own drum beat. And I find that really cool in watching a different uh, dance from tango in Argentina to salsa in, in Colombia and Puerto Rico to. Uh, you know mariachi over here in mexico and just watching how people you know dance and with that i would say travel is something that many most people around the world either uh uh are inspired to do or want to do or they do a lot of so yep. you know unfortunately most people are barely have the time or money to do it which is one of the sad things you know we find ourselves working our tail off so much yep to make to pay the bills and never get ahead enough to actually travel more than a week or two a year so my you know i one of the things i enjoy about my business is i actually help make it more affordable for people to travel more often yeah we'll talk about that momentarily but uh you touched on your exposure early on to entrepreneurialism with your family now was there anyone who you looked up to when you were growing up as a mentor yeah i've had several along the way and um one that comes to mind was the first guy that turned me on to uh, uh, multi-level marketing when I first got into Amway, I don't know, 30 years ago. Amway, that's going back, isn't it? Well, that's going way, way do back. They, do they still exist? I think they still do. And uh, they're you know mostly around different parts of Asia and what have you where they're okay. most successful. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but that taught me a lot of business ethics and business skills and communication skills. And uh, the guy who turned me on to that was, uh, oh, geez, I'm just slipping my, his name is slipping my mind as that was more than 30 years ago. Oh, yeah. No, it well, does it to all of us. <laughs> yeah, right. But, <laughs> and then a gentleman named Jim Gissy, when I got into uh, sales in, uh, in, the, in the sales world, Jim Gissy was executive vice president for a company that I worked for. And wow, did he ever teach me the, the skills and ability to, uh, to, how to win friends and influence people and one of my first series of books i guess you would say was my probably the biggest influence on me was zig ziglar because oh, yeah. i read his i read his entire you know series of books and went to many of his events early on in life and uh you know learn how to i realize that sales is everything you know yeah. if you're in any industry people are so often afraid of sales they say to themselves, oh, I hate sales. I'm not a salesman. I'm not born salesman. 
And in my mind, it's a learned skill, and it's very important to learn it because you, I don't care what business you're in, you've got to be, if you're not generating sales, you're, you're not growing. So you or somebody on your team has got to be in, uh, on the front end of generating leads and converting and making sales, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer or a uh, candlestick maker or whatever it is. <laughs> you, <laughs> I love it. You better, you better be coming up with ways to close more sales. <laughs> yeah, well, we're definitely going to be talking a little bit about the process of marketing and the things that you're doing shortly. But what have you learned about backing your decision to take a chance on yourself and start a business? Uh, well, it was very early on for me, as I mentioned, at, at uh, age nine, I launched, I was having paper routes. By age 12, I was featured on the front page of the local newspaper for building the biggest route they had ever seen. By age 23, I owned five restaurants and a nightclub. Um, uh, so it's kind of been something in my blood since very early on. I did get into the corporate world when I first moved from Puerto Rico to Florida. So I did have experience and, and I stuck in that for about 10 years or so and grew into the corporate world to a you know, high level position made a lot of money in the corporate world. And then all of a sudden 2008 came around and found myself completely wiped out. Oh know? yeah, like many. Like many, I 2008 lost my job. Well, I had one of my best sales years ever in 2008, 2009. I mean, I, I, I joke about it today uh, because I can laugh about it now. At the time it wasn't funny. But I mean, I had some great sales years. I sold my houses, my cars, my <laughs> boats, my motorcycle, my furniture. The lot. <laughs> That's like one big garret sale. <laughs> yeah, it was little by little. It was like, oh my God, I'm having, I'm having to sell everything just to eat. <laughs> yeah, well, I wonder, you know, those times are hard, but they also teach us a little bit about intestinal fortitude. What what did you discover in terms of the, the bounce back factor? Well, that's one of the, transformational changes that did occur to me during that period 2008 2009 i fell into a deep hole of victimization where i felt i was i was choosing to do what too many people across the this the world do today especially right now in the us it's a trend here to consider your find a reason to be a victim i'm a victim for this uh you know i'm uh uh, in my case, I was thinking it must be because I'm Hispanic, I'm Mexican American. Huh. That must be. That's probably why I'm being kicked out of this company. That's why I, no one else will hire me. I, I, you know, thought I would bounce, you know, bounce right back and be back. You know, it took several years, and and then I had to end up. I launched my own business, and uh, eventually, that's where I'm at today, and got back into business for myself. But I had to change that mindset to realize, hey, I live in you know, one of the greatest countries on earth, the most opportunities. That's why people from all over the world come to the United States. Not that there's other countries that aren't just as great, mm -hmm. but, but I was, uh, you know, feeling sorry for myself and realized I need to get, change that mindset, going back to reading the books that have changed me when I was a child, um, getting back my mindset of that. I can do anything I set my mind to and, and then going out and doing it. And, um, he and realizing and, and taking my, you know, I was afraid to help, you know, have my hat in hand. I didn't want to, I didn't want people who knew me or, or previously knew me as an executive of a big company to see me starting from the bottom all over again. And it was, I felt embarrassed by it and so on. Literally, I moved out of town. I moved to a different city and oh, I started wow. all over. And that was one of the ways I got, I got through it. You know, I said, I'm, I will start completely over at the bottom with a, you know, I went and got a PR job from the bottom of the barrel, door to door sales again, basically, and then work nights again, building it, starting a new entrepreneur business, which is eventually what became marketingboost.com today, along with many other travel sites and businesses uh, uh, my partner and I own. Yeah, fantastic feedback. Now, given that we talked about timeline just earlier, tell me what was life, um, during, what was life like for your business during the pandemic and what is it like now is have things opened up again what's happening well we definitely took a hit but we launched our business we our travel businesses in 2010 and we had amazing successes all the way up through you know uh, uh to you know 2020 when covid hit and that certainly put a you know took our travel businesses down to next to 
you know, very, very little. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were scraping the bottom there to survive. Marketing Boost continued to do somewhat well and, and was stayed profitable during COVID, but it was definitely a struggle. We probably lost about 30, 40% of our membership data, you know, members that were subscribed to the Marketing Boost incentive platform. And of course, nobody was traveling. So our people were handing out our incentives and people were thinking or planning on traveling in the future, using the incentives in the future, but they weren't using them at the time. And as 2021 came around and as the world got sick and tired of lockdowns and people believed more in these vaccinations that they were all getting and and everybody was uh, feeling a little safer and pe realizing not everybody was dying from it, that, uh, you know, all of a sudden we had revenge travel in the middle of 2021. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was a spate of that, wasn't there? Yeah, it, it started bouncing back in the middle of 2021, 2022, and we are back today, you know, way ahead of 2019 numbers, um, and people are, you know, many people, are they have, if they haven't had a chance to travel since the COVID lockdowns, they're, they are ready to go. They're and ready to go. Of, and because of all of the, uh, the inflation around the world, you know, people are even more interested now in saving money on travel. So the the travel incentives that we offer have been very effective. Yeah, well, great. We'll talk about the, those things in a moment. But I noticed something when I was going through your uh, your LinkedIn profile. You talked a little bit recently on your podcast, which I'd like to talk about as well later on. But you talked a little bit about AI. Now, I know that there's a hell of a lot going on in the AI space right now. And I just wanted to get your take on AI. Should we embrace it, fear it? push it to the side? How do you think it's going to unfold in the future? Well, so far, what I see is something we all we definitely should embrace. Um, I think any any company should be uh, should be challenging their entire staff, or at least everybody of certain, you know, levels of management mm -hmm. and to in, you know, and, and secretarial staff and you know, virtual assistant staff, whatever you've got going on, you should be challenging your entire team to daily see what they can do to embrace uh, uh, artificial intelligence into their workload. What can they do to improve their own circle, their own work steps in their world? And then for that matter, your IT team, because it's it's just amazing what you can what you can begin to do with artificial intelligence. Everything from writing your, you know, improving your email campaigns, your your mm. whatever, yeah, uh, writing your YouTube video scripts, uh, giving you ideas for you know social media uh, posts and scripts. And the list is I long, mean, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it it it, it's, it just makes it, you know, if you begin to use the platforms to their potential and I'm still a, a newbie scratching the surface yet. I've got quite a bit going on with it, mm. but, but, um, it's just amazing how quickly the, you know, once you train your, you know, chat GPT and you educate your, your, your own account on what your business is all about. And then you yep. ask it, you know, create the prompts that create the right, the right responses. And it's just forget about it. It's a, uh, it's it's yeah. amazing. It, it's just incredibly to me um, awe inspiring how accurate it is. So I appreciate your feedback on that. Now you talked a little bit about your business marketing boost earlier. How did the idea for this company come about? Great question. Thanks. It came about by accident. We were in the you know I've been, I mentioned we've been in the travel space for many years, and we were building a very a very successful company of selling travel and resorts and uh, destinations all over the world. And we were hoping we were just new. If we only had video testimonials from these clients, from the resorts, the beaches, the, you know, the pools, the bars, the restaurants. If we had our clients bragging about our, our the hotels we were selling and bragging about our brand, we'd be able to, you know, leverage that into thousands of additional sales, but we could hardly get anybody to ever send go that extra mile of giving us a video review. So we came up with an idea to offer them a bonus trip, three nights in Orlando or Las Vegas, where we had some great hotel relationships. And we're like, if you know, if you'll, we would send a. Now this is a tip, mind you, Rick, that uh, 
any anybody in any business can use. Yeah. Because we all need we all need more social proof. We all need video. We all need testimonials coming in daily, if possible. Yeah. And so, so we came up with a survey process where instead of just asking everybody for a review, we would ask. We would send a survey first the day after people checked in when we expected them to be at their peak of happiness. We'd send them an email and a text message saying, hey, how's the hotel living up to your expectation? If they said, still, you know, hey, we love it. This is great. You know, we'd ask them to rate us between one and five. If they gave us a four or five star rating, we'd reply back immediately. Wonderful. We're thrilled you're loving this resort. Would you do us a huge favor? Help us spread the word about that property and film. A, if you'd film a selfie testimonial, brag about the hotel, brag about our brand, we will reward you with a complimentary hotel stay in Orlando or Las Vegas. Before we knew it, we had hundreds of these video testimonials coming in, and then we could, we were leveraging them all over our website and generating you know hundreds of more sales. But then, of course, as these people raised their hand to use those free trips, they, it was, of course, expensive to provide them with those three nights that we promised. So we had to shut the campaign off because we're like, wow, these cost them money. You know, this is not cheap. So we thought to ourselves, it's, too, it's unfortunate we have to shut it off. What can we do to reduce our cost to fulfill those freebies we're giving away? So we went back to those hotel partners since we were in the travel space. And we said, look, you've got a problem. We think we can help you fix it. Let's be honest. Your hotel is not full year round. You're full on certain weekends, special events, holidays, whatever. But you're not full year round. 70% of the year, you've got 30 to 50% of your rooms going empty. If you'll give us access to those unsold rooms that you think are likely to go empty, we can put couples, families, individuals in those rooms that will likely spend money at the restaurant, the bar, the spa, the casino, the gift shop, the excursion desk. They'll get, you'll earn some revenue versus none because once that clock clicks midnight, if you didn't rent the room, that's zero revenue. Yet the hotel still has to pay mortgages, rent, staff, uh, maintenance b bills, et cetera. The only additional cost for that room is a maid service. So essentially boom we were able to generate you know get access to nearly free inventory if not free and now we could fulfill our own free trips in orlando and vegas then we thought can you imagine if we had more hotels around the world that would participate with this we'd have another standalone business and that's what we set out to do and eventually that's what became marketingboost.com today where we have uh, we provide our members that subscribe to our platform the comp, uh, unlimited complimentary hotel stays, they can give away to their clients with whatever their call to action is. Hmm. Complimentary three nights to up to seven night stays in 130 destinations around the world with no timeshare presentations or hoops to jump through. It's an online platform. After they activate the incentive, they can log in, put in the dates they'd like to travel, see what's available. And based on availability, they can book it, get instant confirmation, and be on their way traveling for pennies on the dollar. So that is what that has grown into. That is, one hell, the, yeah. that is one hell of a response. Thank you very much. Now, it's obviously something that you're very familiar with. You've certainly said that a couple of times for sure and certain. Now, tell me, <laughs> tell me, tell, tell me a little bit about, um, I guess, the uh, – it, it's essentially the ultimate lead magnet, isn't it, for a business – Absolutely. And and, I, and that's the key. It's, it's, it's designed that what we do today, what we teach our members to do is add value with either our incentives or something else. I mean, I obviously biased would recommend you check out marketing boost and, the, you know, three different categories of incentives we offer. But the key today is, you know, the lead lead magnets are still very effective providing value, providing content to your prospects, be it uh, ebook or, uh, you know, your sign up for your newsletter or watch my, you know, download my PDF mm -hmm. or watch or watch this special video, the training on how to do the following. And you're providing in today's world, you need to provide value, you need to provide free content to to get people engaged in, in your product or service. Yep. But but ideally, as you're generating that free content or providing that free content, you're generating your own database. You need to be generating a database that you own in today's world. You need to own an email and a phone number and a contact that you can nurture that prospect with ongoing emails, text messaging, voicemail broadcasting. You know, you need to traditional work. marketing. Yeah. You know, once you've captured that lead, you need to work it right and uh, to eventually convert it to one of your clients. 
Now, generating, requesting that lead, what's not working as well as it used to in those, uh, in those uh, uh, lead magnets is people are hesitant to give you uh, an email address or, or their most, or their most, you know, their main email address mm. or, or to give you an accurate phone number, you know, because they really don't want to be spammed and, and text message and so forth. And that's where adding that additional value, adding, you know, a, a incentive, if you may, if you will, is can help you get accurate information that you can use to convert to sales. Uh, so that's a food for yeah, thought wow. that up. Now, most people don't even understand when I, we talk about incentive-based marketing, they usually don't get it. If you allow me, Rick, I'd like to talk about two of the most worldwide recognized incentives that people might recognize. That sure, get definitely. them to. For example, we uh, Amazon. I don't know how popular uh, Amazon is on your side of the world, but over here, it's one of, <laughs> that's funny. One of them. <laughs> One of the most popular but most successful men in the world, uh, Jeff Bezos, he launched over a decade ago, Amazon Prime. And the incentive, I mean, when he launched that, very few of us were into streaming video. When we paid $99 a year for Amazon Prime wasn't to access the video streaming content. It was to get free shipping. That was the incentive. We bought into the get me free shipping by purchasing Amazon Prime. And then we were, you know, became loyal clients to Amazon for the next decade, right? We're all shopping now on Amazon before we shop anywhere else. I'm a Prime else. member. Yep. And, of course, now we watch the Prime videos, but we didn't even know that going in 10, 12 no. years ago when he launched yep. that. I remember for years I never bothered to log into Amazon Prime to look at to watch a movie or a video or anything else, but I used the free shipping. Well, yeah. that is one example. Another one is McDonald's with the Happy Meal. Happy Meal, they have generated over three billion dollars every year for decades in additional revenue that they can attribute to families with kids choosing McDonald's over other fast food outlets because they can. They, they have the Happy Meal, which includes the seasonal toy for the kid. It's yep. the incentive. And they take their eye off of the price and the package, and they're buying the bundle of the burger, the soda, the snack, and the toy. So the idea that I try to present here is what is your adult Happy Meal? What are you doing to add another additional value? You, you might say, and people often would you know, say, well, well, does it have to be something along my my own line of products? Well, it maybe could and should be. You can always add more widgets of your own. A buy one get one free has always been a huge popular you know example. Yep. Yep. Um, but you know, it, rather than discounting, if you can find you know partner with colleagues, network with others. If I'm selling a, a course, maybe I include you know a portion of a colleague's course. When you buy my course, you get a, a, a sampling of my partner's course over here, and he does the same with your course. So you're partnering with somebody else, and you're offering a collective, you know, adding additional value. When you buy mine, yeah. you get a portion of somebody else's. When you pay for 12 months of my program, you get the 13th month free. When you, you know, pay for six months in advance, you get the seventh month free. Something, you know, obviously creating your own value add programs versus discounting can be huge yep, yep or you know and then of course in, in my biased opinion looking at adding whether they be occasionally or full-blown what we've done with the with the travel incentives is giving you another outlet similar to you know what does uh, what does videos from amazon prime have to do with purchasing a widget on amazon nothing the you know, you you bought it because you wanted the free shipping. What does a, a toy have to do with burgers at, bur at, at McDonald's? So the incentive doesn't have to tie in exactly to your product line. It has to be something, though, that people may want. And that's where, you know, being biased here, a little bit of an infomercial, if you don't, if, uh, if you allow me, <laughs> is where the marketing boost incentives have truly helped thousands of business owners inc add incredible revenue to their bottom line. Yeah, great feedback. Now, tell me a little bit about um, relationship building and trust with this system and the people that are working with business owners that are out there. They're real businesses and they're not directly part of Marketing Boost. Tell me what, uh, how important those relationships are. 
Well, I'm not sure if I follow the question. Uh, the trust In terms factor... of the relationship with your business and the, the many people that I've seen working with your business, um, it, it, does it forge long-term relationships? Because it's obviously a, some, a subscription-based model. Tell me a little bit about the types of people you work with and the relationship that you have with them. Yeah, no, we've, we've over the years, helped uh, uh, thousands of entrepreneurs and continue to. We have thousands of members around the globe now that mm. use our marketing boost incentives. And they, you know, what they're often doing is because we've built a, a trust factor that our incentives work and we have uh, incredible reviews and view ratings with the different incentives that we offer. So they stand uh, and, and have proven to be successful for these members. But with that, they uh, they can create loyalty programs. They can have used them to uh, reward clients, you know, after, you know, maybe on their one year anniversary. And, uh, so although, uh, for example, a Marketing Boost member can give away as many of these incentives as they like, you could, we because they have unlimited use of them, we, we recommend you don't give them out like candy. You need huh. to make you need to make people earn them to hold to, to hold the value of these uh, travel incentives. So, for example, although you could give them away like candy, we say you shouldn't, you know, make people make people earn it, such as pay for 12 months in advance. We had one guy, for example, he made five hundred thousand dollars in additional sales in four days by adding the marketing boost incentive. He had a subscription business and he had people paying him ninety seven dollars a month. So he found marketing boost and he ran this program saying, hey, if you pay for 12 months in advance, you get the 13th month free and you get five nights in your choice of Cancun or Hawaii. If you pay for 12 months, six months in advance, you get three nights in Las Vegas or, you know, a few other U.S. destinations. And uh, he had about 300 of them step up and pay for a year in advance at $1,200. And he had another 150 pay for six months in advance at 600 or so. Yeah. And combined, it was, you know, way over close to $500,000 in instant rev additional cash flow that he hadn't seen. So now that's an ongoing part of his business. And I've, you know, could go on with, you know, for days, uh, we have a bunch of test, uh, case studies on our website mm -hmm. showing showing how others have done similarly. And of course that builds, that can build the most important things that can build trust and loyalty for your, you know, the, the business owner who works with us with their clients, which is what it's all about. Obviously I, need to have a you know a good relationship with all of our members and we do mm. but my goal my goal is to make sure that that each of our members can use these incentives to enhance their credibility their um loyalty you know their customers their loyalty their reward programs uh, i've got coffee shops throughout the u.s a whole chain of them that want to that they are not not starbucks yet <laughs> but there's a <laughs> Well, there's another one, and and they have a a loyalty program that give you know who would think you could you know, use these travel incentives for coffee for example, mm. but they have this they have this reward point system in there that if you once you get to a thousand points you know which is like a thousand dollars it's a lot of coffee and snacks and you know uh, croissants and what have you, but as they get to a thousand dollars worth of points in their store they earn. A, you know, a complimentary hotel stay. And along the way, they give them the restaurant savings vouchers. They give them the, the hotel savings cards, you know, at different levels. And they're, they have built their own loyalty program without having to discount or cost them any m real money, any in, money in providing them these travel incentives, for example. Tell me, um, is this something that you use as an incentive for your own internal uh, employees' performance? Can, can it be used like that? It certainly can. It can be done. We have, you know, tons of the uh, multi-level marketers. Uh, you know, like I said, I got my, my teeth in, into the business world in Amway. Debt, you know, multi-level marketing many, many years ago. Uh, today, there's so many other different. I think network marketing is a great way to get started in business, or even, you know, really grow a true business. Uh, we're not multi-level marketing by, by the way, in any way, but it's. Uh, now, I've got many of them that use the incentives to to reward folks for reaching the quick start goals as they get into their as they're building their downline or saying, hey, you know, as soon as you sign up, 10 people will reward you with this bonus and so on. Uh, of course, all kinds of companies use it to uh, to reward their sales staff, you know, insurance companies and so on. 
Um, realtors all over, you know, are offering these as you know, housewarming gifts to their clients. There's just, a, you know, with a little bit of creativity, there's a million ways to use these, whether it be even if it's just occasionally as a strategy of uh, rewarding a client or full-blown heavy-duty marketing campaigns. Um, I've even seen them used. We've, we used to use them in our own travel space when we got started. We use them to solve customer service problems even. So let's say you, you or you, one of your team members drops, drops the ball with a client and they wrote a negative review online, which is never going away. So now you got that negative review sitting up there. You could, you could contact the client and say, listen, we, we really want to apologize for how we dropped the ball. We'd like to, we'd like to really ask you to re, you know, hit, hit the reset button. If you will give us a chance to fix the problem, we'll ship you a new product. We'll do it, whatever we got to do to fix it. And we'll also would like to reward you with a three night stay in uh, Canary Islands or three nights in Spain or three nights in Paris or three nights in Las Vegas on us if you would consider taking down that review or revising it once we fix the problem, would you, you know, and now you can, again, use this incentive to either get them to remove a negative review after you fix the problem, of course, and, or, uh, it's interesting. Least- Cause I, I think when you talk like this, I, I think about the term irresistible offer. Um, may I ask Marco earlier, you talked about free or almost free nothing in the world is free there's got to be some sort of overhead that comes along with a product like this is there anything that people that are receiving this product should be aware of sure absolutely i did forget to include those disclaimers and talking about this they they obviously don't include air for, on the mm. on the complimentary hotel stays for example yep. they don't yep. they, they don't include airfare or any transportation on how they get yep. to and from the hotel they don't include food and beverage Normal uh, stuff. So, so normal stuff. And they don't include government taxes and fees or the VAT. You know, so there's uh, there's an activation fee that uh, needs to be paid when they receive the incentive, which covers those government taxes that will be due when they travel. And then yep. they're going to have 18 months to select travel dates and go. Uh, because we're fulfilling what would otherwise or filling what otherwise be empty hotel rooms, yeah. There, it's it's not travel on demand. So they, there's a 30 day, 14 to 30 day advance notice required. So they won't be able to book for t- tonight. They'll need to book, you know, in, in advance. Or, yeah, usually 30 days in advance or more, depending upon availability. And we fulfill, we provide about 32 weeks out of 52 weeks of availability in all the destinations worldwide. So. Mm-hmm. You know they're they're not going to get the the Christmas holiday. They're not going to get Easter week. Uh, yep. They're they're not going to get you know their birthday may or may not be available. If they can be somewhat flexible, there's 32 yep. weeks out of 52. They're going to be able to travel for you know again just paying essentially and, the the vet. And I appreciate that clarity, that truth behind it because I think that's one thing that uh, a lot of people overlook sharing is the the realities of it. I and mean, I think it's a great model. I think there's a lot of opportunity in that, but. But uh, we also have to understand that there are people out there that might not be aware of those things. So thanks again for sharing. Now, tell me a little bit about um, uh, your podcast. I know that you do a podcast and I've uh, enjoyed listening to a few few episodes. Talk to us about that. Wonderful. Yeah. I, like you, Rick, my goal is to uh, I've, uh, we've just reached our one year anniversary with uh, uh, a little over 52 episodes. So now we're up to about 60. And um, we uh, the the goal is similar to you. We're, we're we invite guests that are that are having all kinds of successes and different. The whole idea is to provide value to our membership so that we can continue to give them inspiration and tips and ideas on how to grow their business. And so I look for other experts in, across the you know the. the the realm, whether it be marketing expertise, artificial intelligence expertise, mm-hmm. whether it be you know video uses of video, YouTube advertising, SEO. I mean, we're bringing in everybody in, and simply just business success stories like similar to yours, where we're show where we are uh, again trying to inspire entrepreneurs and giving them that inspiration to keep on going because it's easy to give up, you know. 
I think one of the biggest challenges that entre- so many of us are entrepreneurs today, we have the the ability with today's technology to be a home based business operating, you know, from your kitchen counter and getting started from your, you know, as a as a one man operation, and then eventually you start hiring a virtual assistant team and you're growing into something. But when you're working from home and there's so many entre- you know solopreneurs around the globe doing this. There's nobody to pat you on the back when you start having a few successes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you've got you're on your own, you know, for good right. or for, for bad, which means when you hit nothing but failures after, you know, because not everything works, you got to do. Good a lot. news is that you're the boss, but the bad news is that you're the boss. You're the boss, and <laughs> and uh, so you know there is no. I rec, you know, I have a little. I don't have it on this desk with me because I'm traveling, but I've I keep a little. Uh, like a bell on top of a hotel counter, oh, yeah, ding, yeah, yeah. ding, ding, ding. Yeah. And I've got this little bell on my desk at home. And I remind myself to celebrate the small successes of the day as I, you know, whatever they might be. You know, I start out with my, my discipline with writing my to-do list for the week and then for the day. And then I start out my day. And as I cross off each of those lines on my to-do list, it's bing, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> One more thing out of, out of the way today. I'm celebrating my own small successes. And, uh, you know, if I accomplish the whole thing, maybe I go to dinner, treat my, my you know, wife and myself to go out. And I'm rewarding myself so that I have that, discipline to get up early tomorrow and that drive yeah, yeah look as we enter the point end of the call i'd love to talk a little bit about how does it make you feel when you see people using your product achieve the same level of success uh in their businesses yeah that is what what motivates me to get up and work every day i i uh, i've had a lot of successes in my life especially over the last uh, decade again after uh, hitting bottom and coming back up and uh be, well because i know what it's like to hit bottom it's hit have to start all over i'm never comfortable and i don't allow myself to get comfortable anymore so you know i, I you know, even though i've got plenty of cash flow and everything else i refuse yeah. to get to settle and get comfortable I, I keep chasing it like i'm broke so that i can you know keep growing but when i see people in my organization, in my community, I've got a Facebook group with over 30,000 entrepreneurs in it where we're always trying to help and provide. The, when I see people you know, post in the group something that they did, that they're seeing these huge successes or we interview them on our show, and mm-hmm. uh, that is what fulfills me the most is to see that we are uh, so helping others you know, generate, in some cases, millions of dollars in additional revenue annually that's when, when i see that when i've seen people generate hundreds of thousands of dollars or what have you in additional revenue and that's not the story for everybody that's only you know the few that have really figured out how yeah the 80 20 rule but but even small significant but when some of them have hit it out of the park i am always think i've often thought to myself i'm not charging enough for this program <laughs> Uh, uh, well, look, I, I I know that there's uh, you know a lot a lot more to learn. I'm a I'm a white belt learner in this respect. I know nothing beyond what you've shared with me today, and I do appreciate it. Now, when somebody wants to find out more about uh, your business, where are they going to find uh, find you, and what is the process to to get get going? Two places that I recommend is one going to marketingboostsolutions.com. Marketingboostsolutions.com. There we provide access to, of course, the, the Marketing Boost platform and, of course, and, and a number of other software solutions that we offer to help you grow your business, including automation and artificial intelligence and so forth. And, uh, and then we also have, of course, you can go straight to marketingboost.com where we, uh, you know, just you can sign up for. Okay. Yeah, we actually have a, a freemium version. You can go to marketingboost.com and get a, or marketingboostsolutions.com and get a free version of Marketing Boost with no credit card required. And of course, it's very it's limited. You can only you only have access to a few destinations, but you can give yourself one of these complimentary trips from our top seven destinations. You can uh, test it out, get a glimpse of how this works without even putting in a credit card and giving yourself a complimentary trip or even giving your clients complimentary trips with this program. Uh, yeah. Or from there, you can, of course, sign up for a paid version and get the full suite of products. 
Fantastic. Well, look, if you're on this call today, you want to learn more, certainly reach out to uh, Marco and his team at either of those websites. I'll be making at least one of those links back to Marco and his team available for you. And with all that being said, Marco, I've really, really appreciated you opening up and sharing your story with us. And thank you again for joining me on the My Future Business Show today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.